I did it. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about combo boxes. And we're gonna get into a little bit more uh, uh, better practice. Okay. A little bit more of the better practices. Anyway, not more better practice. <clears throat> okay, so I've got this combo box here and we've all seen that. Uh, and that is right there, right? So you just drag that onto the surface. I've given mine a catchy name. Man, VS is really dogging today, huh? Hmm. Maybe click on it again. No. <laughs> Let me do this. It's just dogging today. I don't know why. It was closed before. It's not like it's been open for a long time. Mm -hmm. Is it still getting ready to? No, it says ready right down here. Yeah. <clears throat> come on, man, really? Let me close the form and come back in. There we go. OK. There you go. So I've given it the very clever name of names Woo -hoo. because in this case, it's going to be server names. Now, as okay. with almost everything, there's more than one way to get things done. <clears throat> You'll mm -hmm. almost never do this, but you can come in here and just enter in values one per line. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Only in the rarest of circumstances will you do something like that. Because if you need to change anything at all, that means you have to change your code, redeploy. <clears throat> it's just not worth it, right? Um, the only time that I would even consider doing something like this would be something like <clears throat> maybe state names, right? Where the states aren't going to change. Their names aren't going to change. So I could put 50 state names in here and be just fine. I still wouldn't do okay, it like yeah. this, but you could. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Hell, I wouldn't even put genders in there like that anymore. Case. Yeah, but I wouldn't okay. even put genders in there like that anymore, right? So, <clears throat> okay, so its name is Combo Names. So we are going to load this guy. And I've chosen to load it with a table, a data table. Okay. okay. The reason why is because most of the time you're going to be pulling that data out of a database. Yep. So pulling this in with a data table gives you the automatic format you need, right? So you don't have to change your code to change it to a SQL table. You just have to change the column, right? So once you get it into this data table, it's the same data table that you're going to pull back from SQL. <clears throat> and here I'm just, uh, I've created a servers column and I've loaded it with six server names. Now you'll see very easily that this is almost the exact same code you use in PowerShell, right? With the exception of this, right? But everything else is the same. So there's a lot of crossover here between C Sharp and PowerShell. Now that I've got my data table loaded, I do a for each data row in table dot rows and again exactly like powershell except for the the parameters right <clears throat> i don't have to do it this way i could just put this guy 
right inside these parens. But you know me, data then usage, right? So if I need to do anything with this server name, if I need to scrub it for anything uh, by trimming it, or um, <clears throat> if I need to uh, do uppers or lowers or present it a different way, right? Uh, like add on the, the DSN to it or something like that, it's much easier to do here. And by the time I load my combo box, all I'm doing is loading that variable that's already been taken care of, right? So this adds, you know, two extra lines of code to this, but it's really not that big of a deal when you consider what you may get for it in the future. And prob and maybe not with this particular one, because I'm just pulling back server names, right? But maybe, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to be doing this with, you know, different data in the future. And so instead of, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, having to change my code, then I've still got, I've got the, the format here to be able to change uh, that other data that I'm going to load in a different combo box. And, you know, maybe I want to take the, the, the DSN off of here, right? Maybe I want to supply just the server name instead of like the, the, the full DSN, right? Um, <clears throat> so this again, the exact same as PowerShell, even this is the exact same. And so I just call combo.items.add. And I do that for each row in the table. Is there anything confusing here? There shouldn't be. Uh, looks OK. Right? Uh, I mean, it's fairly yeah. straightforward, right? You add, yeah. you add <clears throat> the combo box list is just that. It's a list, right? And so. <clears throat> On front-end programming, how do you um, how do you fill lists, right? You almost always have to do it in a loop, one row at a time. Add, 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 right? And you just append to it. Well, <clears throat> same thing here. So just know that you know when you load this guy, you're going to go to items and add. And you can do something like add range. There's an add range method. <clears throat> but it's pretty much the same thing. You're just putting all the items in a single object and then adding that object. But it's it, it's the same basic thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So OK, let's run this guy. Now, what I'm doing here is I have decided to that whenever I change, so this is just filling the combo yeah. box, right? I still have to the use combo it. Box. So yeah. on the selected index changed event, I've decided to set the label equal to the selected item. So I'm going to come here. And this worked last night. I haven't run it today, but let's hope it still works. There's no reason it shouldn't, but demos and all that, right? So, okay, I got my combo box, got my server names, and yep. my server changes. Yep. There we go. Yep. So let's take a look at this again. If I highlight this guy, come to properties, go to events lots of events to choose from, right? So I just mm. chose selected index changed. You could probably even do selected value changed, right? But index is good enough. <clears throat> so on that, I double clicked on it. It automatically created this guy for me. And I just set the label text equal to the selected item. <clears throat> so I could do, let's see if I say, Combo names dot, and I've got all these guys here. So all these properties and methods I can choose from, and I just chose the property of selected item, which is selected item, 
right there. So <clears throat> there you go. It's that simple. Let me get rid of that. Oops, I didn't get rid of that though, did I? There we go. No, we've got a couple more things to talk about. Uh, first, this is my good practice, right? This isn't necessarily <coughs> an industry standard, but it's a way that I've come to deal with large amounts of code because it, it can get really unwieldy. And I would be interested in hearing how a real C sharp guy deals with this, but I've created regions here for, and you notice even the region is the exactly the same as PowerShell. <clears throat> so I like to keep like, if I've got just one combo box here, then I'll keep that combo boxes methods. Um, I'll keep that combo boxes methods uh, together in a region. If I've got, um, you know, different things, if, I, if I've got different methods for uh, a combo box and they'll, for a specific one, then I'll name it here, right? In fact, I'll have two different regions. I'll say combo methods, and then I'll go in there and create a region for each individual combo box. And the same thing here, I've got that button method still. And so I've got the button methods here. So I like to separate things by, you know, what elements are on the page. And I'm having mouse trouble today, so it's, there we go. <clears throat> so, okay. And of course, I've got my begin and end fill and my begin and end data table. But all of this doesn't solve one problem. Okay, great. I have done all of this, but where does this combo box actually get loaded, right? So you'll notice that if I highlight the form, it has methods too, or events, right? And if you double click on here, it'll give you a form load event, which means that anything that goes inside that form load event will happen when the form loads. So you'll notice inside of here, when the form loads, is when I load this guy. So it's already been created in the designer that gets, and all that stuff gets loaded ahead of time. And now I'm going to create my data table and I'm gonna fill my combo box. And if I have, you know, grids that need to be populated and all that stuff, all of that stuff happens here in the load event. That's fairly clear. Good. And again, tons of stuff in the in the form event. Lots of form events. So <clears throat> it's uh um it's a very, very rich. So you can do preload and postload and so on and so on and so on and all that stuff, right? So this is where you'll create or where you'll load all of your objects. But so I'll, I'll before I move on, I'll, I'll ask any questions on anything so far. Have I put you to sleep? PC, you there? Hello? 